Welcome everybody to our first content video of the semester. Um, <clears throat> hopefully at this point you guys have read through the syllabus and you've watched that intro video on how to work Canvas and My Lab Pearson. So today we're going to be learning about limits and how they relate to calculus. So in business calculus, we kind of cover the two big pillars of calculus, which are derivatives and integrals. And in order to understand those and calculate those, we need to understand limits and how they work. So what is a limit? Well, in order to understand this question, we need to, uh, we need to understand what limits actually tell us. So, a limit answers the question, what happens to a function, what happens to a specific function as the x value, or you'll notice I put in parentheses input, uh, because it doesn't have to be an x value, it could be a t value, whatever you classify as your independent variable. So what happens to a function as your input approaches a certain number? So let's look at a nice simple example here. So let's say I have a function f of x equal to 2x minus 1. Nice simple linear function, right? It's got a slope of 2, y-intercept of negative 1. You'll see I graphed it over here to the right. Okay. Well, what if I wanted to know what's the limit? So in mathematics, to calculate a limit, we use this notation lim of my function as x approaches, you'll notice I use this arrow to show that it's approaching a value. x isn't necessarily equal to the value, but it's approaching that value as x approaches, uh, let's say, 3. Okay, well, I can go over to x equals 3, and it turns out that my function has a corresponding y value for that x value, right? It's got a corresponding y value of 5. So the limit of my function as x approaches 3 is just 5. What's my output value as x approaches 3? Well, you might be thinking, well, what's the point of that? I could have gotten that by just plugging in that function value, right? If I just plug 3 into the function, I'm going to get out 5. So why do I need limits for this? And that's a fair question. The reason why I didn't need limits here is because I was working with a nice continuous function. But the, where limits become very helpful and useful is in very specific situations like the following. What if I'm sorry, let's see. Let's reword this thing. What if the x value approaches a number where the, the function is not continuous, right? If the function is not continuous at a specific x value, I can't just plug that x value in. I won't get out of value. Okay, these are what's these are what's called discontinuities. Okay, so that's an important spot where um, limits are going to become very useful. And the other spot is, well, what if x? I'm going to use more mathematical notation here instead of writing it out. What if x approaches? infinity. What if I let an x get infinitely large, right? If I'm letting x get infinitely large, I don't have a specific x value to actually plug in. I can't plug in infinity. So these are kind of the two areas where limits become very useful. Okay. So let's look, in, let's look at an example here. So here I have a function. Let's go ahead and call this function. Oops, sorry. Let's go ahead and call this function f of x, okay? And this function is actually what's called a piecewise function. 
We're going to talk a little bit more about these later. But a piecewise function is where, depending on what your x value is, your rules change. Okay? You have a different rule, and you'll see that by the different colors on the lines. Each different color is a different rule that your function is switching to, depending on what your x value is. Okay. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on in this graph. This is not just a nice, simple, continuous graph. I have specific x values where the function is not continuous. I have discontinuities. Discontinuities. That. Well, let's see. I've got one here at negative 3. I've got one here at negative 1. And I've got one here at 2. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I've got three discontinuities. So, let's calculate the limits at these discontinuities. Okay? So, let's start with negative 3. What's my limit of my function as x approaches negative 3? Well, this discontinuity is called a hole, right? For obvious reasons, right? Uh, because you just have this hole in the middle of your line, okay? Well, uh, if I, once again, if I try and plug in negative 3 into the function, right? If I just try and do f of negative 3, because it's a discontinuity, this does not exist. DNE does not exist. There is no corresponding output value here. So I can't just use what the function value is. Instead, I have to look at what value the function is actually approaching. Okay. So if I let my, so if I think about this, right, I'm going to let X approach negative three. Well, what's happening to my Y value as my function approaches that X value? What's my Y value? It's about... 2.75, okay? With a hole, it's as simple as if I filled that hole, what would the function value be, right? And in this case, right, 2.75, 2 about 2 and 3 quarters, okay? Okay, and notice that, you know, I chose to do it from the left side. If I, if I come and do that from the right side, I approach the same y value, right? So it doesn't matter with, with this hole, it doesn't actually matter what direction you kind of approach this from, right? It doesn't matter which direction I approach it from. Okay, well, let's, let's, look, at, let's look at the next example. So like, I, like we said, this was my whole discontinuity. Oh, well, let's look at my next discontinuity. What's my limit of my function? as x approaches negative 1. Where is my function going as x approaches negative 1? Once again, if I try and plug in negative 1, I'm going to get a value that doesn't exist. I don't have a corresponding y value, so I have to use a limit here. Well, if I approach negative 1, and let's once again, let's just start from approaching from the left. What's happening to my function? <clears throat> well, if I follow the trajectory of my function, my function is going, is getting infinitely negative. So my function is approaching negative infinity. This is what's called an asymptote. You guys may have heard that word before. This is another type of discontinuity where as your x approaches that discontinuity, your y values are getting infinitely large, whether that's infinitely positive or infinitely negative. Okay. Now, this is interesting because, um, you know, I, I was just approaching negative 1 from the left. But if I approach from the right, my function is not going to negative infinity. It's going to positive infinity. So which one do I use? Well, it turns out with limits, you can specify what direction. So I have to be a little bit more accurate here. 
In order for me to get negative infinity for my limit, I have to be approaching from the negative direction. So you'll notice I put a little negative sign up in almost like the exponent of negative one. And that tells me that I'm approaching from the left or from the negative direction where my numbers are more negative. So if I switch this and said, let's let X approach negative one from the positive direction of my function, what am I gonna get? Approaching from the positive direction means I'm approaching from the right. And like we said before, if I approach from the right, then my function approaches positive infinity. So, uh, it's interesting, I get two different limits depending on what direction I choose. Okay, and that's possible with asymptotes. You can have one side of the asymptote go to negative infinity and the other side go to positive infinity. So if I go back to my, my original question, what's my limit as x approaches negative one? If I do not specify a direction, what do I put? Negative infinity or positive infinity? Well, if I don't specify a direction, there's no way you can know which one of those to put because both of them are correct just depending on what direction. So if I don't specify, if, if I don't specify a direction, then the limit doesn't exist. You'll notice that this wasn't true for my whole, right? So let me draw a line between them. If I go back and look at my whole example, this wasn't true because, and why was that true? Because it doesn't matter what direction I came from, I was approaching the same value. It didn't matter what direction I was coming from. Okay, so let's keep going. So there's, so there's one more discontinuity that I've got to look at. And let me, I got to get a new page here. So I've got a, perfect. Okay, got a new page. So what about x equals two? Okay, why am I not drawing? Okay, so next, what's my limit as x approaches two? Well, so that's, so now I'm looking at this spot right here, okay? For this example, does it matter what direction I come from? Absolutely, this is what's called a jump discontinuity. Okay, where your graph, when it reaches a certain x value, jumps. So in this case, once again, the direction is going to matter. So let's start with approaching from the negative direction. What's happening to my function as I approach from the negative direction? Well, let's, if I look at my graph, that means I'm coming from this direction, which means I'm looking at this part of the graph. What is that part of the graph approaching as I get closer, as I get infinitely close to two? Well, it's approaching this value, which is three, right? Right in between, exactly midway between two and four. So my value is three. Okay. What about from the positive direction? If I approach from the positive direction, that means I'm coming from this side, which means I don't actually use this function, or I don't use the left function, I'm using this right function. What is this function approaching? What is this right function approaching as I get close to two, as I get infinitely close to two? And in that case, it's approaching this y value. It's approaching a y value of four. So, Jumps, that's part of what makes them a jump. Jumps will always approach two different values depending on what direction you come from, right? It'll always approach two different things, whether coming from the left side or from the right side. So going back to that same point from asymptotes, what happens if I, hello? 
what happens if I just ask you, what's the limit of f of x as x approaches 2? If I don't specify direction, this limit does not exist. Because it approaches two different values depending on what direction you come from. Okay, so that takes care of my discontinuities, but remember, limits were also helpful if x approaches infinity. So, let's look at that situation. What's my limit as x approaches infinity? Now, a lot of times, in fact, if I go all the way up to my very first simple, oh, I'm, my graph's gone. I don't know what happened to it. But with a lot of functions, if I let my x get infinitely large, then your y value is also going to get infinitely large or infinitely negative, right? For a lot of functions, the limit as x approaches infinity is also infinity, okay? But for some functions, specific, uh, exponential functions are a really good example of this. With some functions, your y value actually approaches a finite value as you let x get infinitely large. So if I go back to this example, if I let x... If I let x get infinitely large, that means I'm just letting x go as far as I want this direction, to the right, right? I'm letting x get as, as large as I want to the right. Well, what's happening to my function? If I follow the function, in this, for this specific function, it starts to flatten out. And specifically, it flattens out at a y value of 2. Okay? So what I can say is my limit as x approaches infinity is 2 because it flattens out at that y value, okay? Okay, and you'll notice that if I let x approach infinity, there's no two directions ab about it. I can only approach infinity from, from one direction, so I don't have to worry about... No, sorry, sorry. Okay, I don't have to worry about specifying direction. Okay. Um, similarly, I can also look at what's my limit as x. Sorry, I'm getting down to the bottom of the paper, so let me remove this. As x approaches negative infinity. Same thing, I can only approach negative infinity from one direction. I can only approach it from the right. What's happening to my function as I let x approach negative infinity? Well, let's come back and look at it. So that represents me going this way. What happens as I let x get infinitely negative? Well, if I follow my function, it's doing, the, it's doing something similar. It's flattening out at a specific y value. What's that y value? In this case, it's y equals 3. Okay, So I would say the limit as x approaches negative infinity of my function is three, because it's my function is flattening out at an x value of three. Okay. So that's the big idea of limits, at least when I'm looking at a graph. So, so in 1.2, we'll talk about, well, can I calculate limits without a graph? Okay. And it turns out you can. In fact, I said earlier that we were going to talk about piecewise functions a little bit more. Piecewise functions are a really good example of where you can calculate the limit without actually using a graph. Okay, so let's look at let's look at an example of a, a piecewise function. Okay, so let's say I have the piecewise function g of x is equal to, and this is how you write uh, piecewise functions. You use a bracket like this. My function is equal to x minus two if x is less than 3 and negative 1 third x plus 4 if x is greater than or equal to 3. Okay, so like I said before, a piecewise function is a function where uh, the, the rule or the function changes depending on what x value you're working with. So in this case, as long as x is less than 3, I use this rule. 
But then once my x value gets greater than or equal to 3, I use that. So the rule is changing once my x value gets greater than or equal to 3. Well, you'll notice that both of those functions, x minus 2 and negative 1 third x plus 4, those are, once again, just simple linear functions. So I know there's not going to be any discontinuities in this function, except for where's my only possibility for discontinuity? The only possibility is where the rule changes. So the only possibility is, do I have a discontinuity at x equals 3? Because that's where the rule changes. Well, to figure that out, I'm going to use limits. Okay? Because if, if my function's continuous, then the function should be approaching the same value from either direction. If it doesn't, then I have a jump discontinuity. So what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at what's my limit of my function as x approaches 3 from the negative direction. And what's my limit as x approaches 3 from the positive direction? Okay. Well, uh, let's go back all the way, all the way back to the beginning. If I'm working with a nice simple continuous function, then what did we see about the limit? I can just plug in the number to get what the actual limit value is, because the limit value matched what the function value is as long as I'm working with a nice continuous function. Well, I, I'm working with two linear functions that are nice continuous. The only reason why they might not be continuous is because my, my, my rule is changing, okay? So, if I look at my limit as x approaches three from the negative direction, what which of my linear functions does that relate to? I'm approaching from the negative direction. That means I'm approaching from numbers that are more negative than 3 or less than 3. So that means I would be working with this function because that's where x values are more negative than 3. Okay, well, since once again, since that's a nice linear function, then that's going to approach, all I have to do is just plug 3 into that function and see what happens. That means my function is approaching 1. Okay. But from the positive direction, I can't use that same rule, right? Because from the positive direction means I'm coming from numbers more positive than 3 or greater than 3. If x is greater than 3, then I have to use this function. So, instead of plugging 3 into x minus 2, I'm going to plug 3 into this function. And see what I get out. Negative 1, ter negative one third times 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So... My limits are approaching different values depending on what direction I come from, which means that the limit as x approaches 3, if I don't specify a direction, doesn't exist. Well, what does that tell me about my piecewise function? Is it continuous at 3? Do I have a discontinuity at 3? Oh, my pen stopped working. Well, the answer to that would be yes, right? Because if, if my limit approaches two different values from different directions, as I approach the same x value, then I'm working with a jump discontinuity. And so my function's not continuous at three. Okay, uh, go ahead and try out the homework. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, stay tuned for our next video, which will be about 1.2. How do I evaluate limits without having a graph?